Every step I take, I move my truth. Every time they tell me stop, I use. Every comment, hate that makes my feel gather up my energy and boom. I hear them talking, saying the way that I move is so reckless. That is a part of my mind I've been blessed with. Giving my blood so I am relentless. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome to Keep Hammering Collective Solo. This is a solo because nobody gives a fuck about you guys. But <laughs> We know that. Already. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just me, but you guys are going to help me talk. Yeah. Perfect. And uh, for introductions, we'll get Gideon. We just go by middle names. So what's your middle name? Lawrence. 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 That's right. That's yeah, right. Yeah. We knew that from breakfast. The <laughs> yeah, day. that's right. So yeah. we got James Gideon William, Connor Lawrence. Westlake. 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 All right. Well, you know, <laughs> one thing I didn't, didn't learn until the other day is you guys actually had a podcast at one time. Yeah, I believe it's still out there. Yeah, it's to still the out there. You can still find it. Yeah, which probably not a great idea to do, but cool, yeah. cool logo though. Yeah, a lot of experience. That's what it's all about. It was a golfing centric <laughs> podcast. Is that what it was? Yeah, I yeah. guess you could say we that. We took the podcast about as serious as I take my actual golf game. <laughs> yeah, so it didn't go very far. You guys yeah, but didn't last very long. Putting from the rough, huh? Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> yeah. in more ways than one. <laughs> A little bigger than this one, but right. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that's the goal to get to where you guys were when you. Once we got above, you know, Joe's podcast, we mm -hmm. just decided that's not really fair. So yeah. no, yeah. artistically, you can just only go so far. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You guys had achieved all you wanted. Exactly. Yeah. We yeah. had everything we ever set out to, to achieve and life got boring. Yeah, yeah. I understand. It's, it's like, long, that's why it's kind of like Jordan when he went to baseball. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So you guys could come back. And a lot of people have made that comparison. Yeah. We, we have heard that before. We're though. pretty humble. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, so we're going to, this is going to be another weekly update, right? I think that's kind of what yep. we've been doing. Yeah. Um, when I can't get any guests to show up to my podcast. No, <laughs> no actually. Uh, yeah, we, uh, these are like bonus podcasts, so we still have the regular guests, but yeah. we thought we'd throw in these updates in between. Um, what's on What's on our schedule for today? We got a lot to talk about. A lot happened, I feel like, over the last weekend since Thursday or so. Uh, big thing, women's basketball, NCAA basketball. Mm -hmm. Caitlin Clark, greatest to ever do it, possibly. Yeah, well, no, because she's got some haters that say it because she didn't win a yeah. ship. She can't be the yeah. goat. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Dude. that was a uh, the goat conversation is always about the championships. I feel like that seems was a, like a yeah. tough watch that game. There's some buzz, some hype. Caitlin brought it, but then that also got my eyes on Juju Watkins yep, yep. from USC, USC, and she she can fucking ball. I, I mean, for a freshman, she's, she's fun to watch. She's yeah. a you know scored fifty one, which I think was the most this season for women's women's basketball. Juju pump fake, move around, unable to finish, and now Juju, she like literally was in the air and just moved to the side defensively. In second chances, it will. It feels like. Then Paige. Is it Bukers or? Bukers, Bukers, yeah, yeah. Bukers, I think. Yeah, from UConn. Page Buckets. Buckets. Buckets, yeah, she can ball too. Beckers forces a turnover. Nika Mule, the very talented point guard. Beckers with some flash. How about this block? Paige Beckers may have lost a step right there, but got there in time to send that one to the fifth row. I was like looking forward to the game. Yeah. I was like, okay, what my, what's my day going to be today? Well, I know in the afternoon I'm watching, you know, four hours of basketball. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, the, the elite eight, then the final four, and then the championship game. I yeah. was, I was locked in, but, um, yeah, I don't think I've ever set time out of my day for a woman's sport before until, <gasps> until this, this March madness. I loved when, you know, Caitlin started off in the championship game hot. Eight, I think, yeah, fifteen or eighteen or something in the uh, yeah, I think in the first quarter, maybe fifteen in the first quarter. I think so that was fun, yeah. but I think South Carolina is just a better team. They yeah. more depth. They they, yeah. they did a good job of shutting her down. Yeah. In, the, yeah, in the latter half of the game for sure. Yeah, they. If you looked at the bench scoring, it was like thirty six points for South Carolina, zero for Iowa. Yeah, can't win a can't win a chip like that. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be tough. <laughs> yeah. Gonna be tough, and uh, yeah, I mean, so the depth. A lot of athleticism and speed, it seemed like, on South Carolina. Um, 
in Iowa, I feel like, you know, without Caitlin, would they even make the tournament? You know, I, so I feel like she did a lot to yeah. elevate that team on her own, got them in two finals yeah. last, and they're not like a UConn. It no. used to be like they're, in women's basketball, it was like, there's like four teams. There used to be Tennessee, UConn, uh, I mean, South Carolina's in there now. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, who would be another big one? Anyway. Stanford's pretty good. Stanford, Stanford, yeah. Stanford has a really good coach, Tara somebody. Um, <laughs> yeah. she, great, one of the greats. Yeah, yeah. She, yeah. No, she's, she's a legend in her own name. right. She, household name. Hey, I knew the first name. I mean, yeah. that's got to count for something. But no, she is kind of an icon in the coaching. So yeah, Stanford. And, and other than that, it's like, so you, it's, it seems like, there's enough good players for those four teams, then the other hundred and whatever teams. <laughs> yeah, good luck. You're not well, you're not going to compete. I mean, yeah, I think the college play, college players this year did more for women's basketball than any of the players that are currently in the WNBA. Ever. Yeah, oh, like definitely. No one cared really until this year. Yeah, you know we it, you know we had a player out here that people actually cared about and still sort of do Sabrina Ines, Ines, That's right. Inescu. Yeah, she played for Oregon. Yeah, she was a she was good. I mean, I don't know how many triple doubles she had, but a bunch. And so I kind of did follow her a little bit. I think she went to New York maybe. And um but it's tough. It's like you see those they do those little clips on the sidewalk and they say, "Do you want four tickets to the a WNBA game or $1?" <laughs> And people say, I'll take a dollar. <laughs> and it's like, I mean, I'm not saying, I'm just, you know, when they, t people talk about, well, they should make more money, but if nobody's watching it, where's this money coming from? Yeah. Yeah. So I hope. It's a business. I mean, so. the NBA, I think, subsidizes. Yeah, they do. Yeah. They give them, I think it's like 10 million a year. Yeah. And without it, they, they haven't made money. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, and then you see some of the D WNBA players kind of shitting on Caitlin. I'm like. Yeah. What are you doing? No, <laughs> I yeah. mean, wh in the foot. why are you doing that? This, don't you want these eyes to follow her? And instead of saying, you know, kind of diminishing what she's done in college, it's like, man, it just, you know, they say, well, she hasn't done anything. She's going to be going against grown women. It's like, okay, well, you guys have had the league for I don't know how many years and nobody gives a fuck. Yeah. So you might want to switch it up a little bit and maybe, you know, support these, this talent yeah. coming up. But uh, definitely, I don't know. I think, uh, I see some good players out there and I do, you know, it's fun to watch. I love the excitement. I loved being involved in it. I just hope it continues, but I'm not, yeah. you know, with Caitlin coming in and having that unlimited range and the hype. And then she kind of had a little swagger too, mm -hmm. which yep. is kind of cool. Um, it's going to be tough to simulate that. Or I mean, yeah, is definitely. that going to happen again or is that lightning in a bottle? Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I guess, the, at least, you know, with South Carolina winning, they went on an undefeated run. There's at least some story to that, too. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, no, I mean, for sure. Yeah. I, but, I, I did like how their coach, Don Staley, she said, you know, she wanted to give a lot of respect to Caitlin Clark, Clark for lifting up the women's sports yeah. and yeah. dealing with all, all that pressure all season. So I yeah. thought that was cool. Handled yeah. well. I thought that was great. Yeah. I, I liked hearing that. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's cool to see. I mean, you look at like what Steph Curry did for the game of. Well, men's basketball. Yeah, like the game is totally different now. You right, know, people are shooting way more threes. Like the play yeah. style is different. So maybe we'll see some of that effect with Caitlin Clark. Right, like the women's side, you'll see the game kind of start to change, which would be cool. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah that I saw some similarities because we watched when Steph was at Davidson. He looked. I mean, he's not very big now, but he looked tiny. Like his jersey was huge. He looked like mm -hmm. a middle schooler <laughs> out there, and I, he was just balling out. And I, I can't remember how far they made it. Maybe the Elite Eight. I think they even. went to the Elite Eight, yeah. And Davidson was like, what? Yeah. It was almost like an Iowa, maybe even more of a, uh anomaly than Iowa getting there because I didn't even heard of Davidson and haven't since. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah my dad went to Davidson. That's the oh, reason right. I knew about really? it. Yeah, tiny school, North yeah. Carolina. Yeah. And, oh, okay. His North dad's yeah. Steph Curry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell your dad I'm a big fan. Yeah. Well, I mean, speaking of ultra famous people, you know, athletes, movie stars, we're in the midst of a up and coming Oscar winner. Amen. There we go. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Well said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I, I, I can't really be a no spoiler alert, so I can't yeah. really say how it's, but here's a script 
actually here is part of the script right here. Yeah, redacted. Yeah, you well, can't gray uh, that out. Let me see here. Should I, here's one of my lines. Um, in this day, word gets around. You tarnish that man's name. Talking about ruinous someone's livelihood can't just bust off on a whim. No, did he? <laughs> <laughs> I might have screwed that up, but yeah. So yeah, I am going to be. Well, they say I got the part. I am going to be in a movie. And that's all I can say. I mean, yeah. The, the word on the street is there's an Oscar campaign that comes with it. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is, is this your first role and it like a scripted? Mm hmm. Because I know you were talking about doing other stuff, SAG stuff. And that was just an Under Armour commercial where. Okay. Yeah, it was me and the wolf. <laughs> and that was SAG was involved in that. So actually made money every time that aired. I got like a check for 900 bucks. So that's kind of cool. So. Yeah. So yeah, I I uh, I have done SAG work before, um, but in that I was more in my realm, bow hunting. We were in the mountains here in, uh, on the coast of Oregon. We had a wolf, and uh, it was kind of cool having that wolf there. I think they said to get the wolf, it was five thousand a day or something. So he's getting paid more that than you. His, <laughs> that's his, yeah, that's, that's his, the wolf's day rate. So they ha had a handler, and then to make a snarl, they. They said, okay, you guys got everything you want done before we make it mad because once we bring the meat out, because you t bring the meat uh, out and take it away and the wolf gets pissed, they said, once you do this, we're done. <laughs> because he, the wolf's not going to snap back and be like, do this yeah, regular stuff. Yeah. It's like gets in his head that it wants that meat. There is no working with it after that. And it, so that was... No, no did he? That, <laughs> yeah, you show the meat, right. Yeah. The, the meat that's the, that's the key <laughs> but uh yeah so that was that was actually pretty cool it turned into a pretty good commercial um but yeah so we'll see this is an actual movie with lines and everything else and yeah. uh well you'll we'll have to stick around so we don't can't give any spoilers can you even say what your part is probably not <laughs> <What's> <laughs> probably that, let's what's on that the safe side what's that timeline look like like when is that movie supposed to come out well filming this summer and then I think coming out in 25. Okay. Yeah. So I'm not sure when in 25 it'll be, if it'll be early or summer, but um, yeah, getting all the filming done this summer. Yeah. Sweet. Starting well, in May. I mean, speaking of wolves, there's also some news we got to cover with, with wolves. Um, yeah. This article just came out. Um, this guy in Wyoming, you know, chasing down a wolf on his snowmobile, disabling it taping its mouth shut and bringing it into the bar. God. I mean, it doesn't get much worse than that. Was that. Wyoming? Yeah. Yeah. Sublet. Was, was, a, was it a pup? I, it didn't look like a pup from the picture. I mean, yeah. it looked like a decent-sized wolf, maybe not full-grown, um, if it was. So torturing it, basically. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as they described it in the article, brought it into the bar for... Uh, you know, cheap thrills, basically. God. And and then afterwards, they brought it out back and shot it. Jeez. So, yeah, I mean, as a hunter, you know, as someone who advocates for predator <clears throat> control, I mean, what does this do? Yeah, this is, I mean, this is a black guy. If, if this guy gets lumped in with hunters, which I hope he doesn't, because that's yeah. not, you know, with hunting, no matter what we're hunting, we want to show respect. We want to pursue it honorably. Uh, hopefully kill it mercif mercifully and that's how a hunter um, behaves that's yeah. that's kind of what you want to do right. that's what we're trying you know we want to be respectful we hunting is uh it, you know it's a tradition here in this country and we need to do it the right way so i hope they don't lump that guy into the what i would say call a hunter because that's <clears throat> couldn't be further away from what I think of as a hunter and what right. I think what we want to tr portray to people who don't hunt. So this is like, this is just like some redneck small town, which I'm both of those. So I'm not <laughs> saying that, but it's like the worst of the worst type right. of, you know, this is like the bad guy they have in movies in Hollywood. They always make him some this backwards this dipshit guys. hunter. Right. Yeah. And so this fits right into that. And so the people who don't know hunters who only see hunters, portrayed on a movie just like i described and now they see this then they're like well that's all hunters there you go yeah. this is proof of it and it's not i mean that guy is not a hunter and 
I, I hope he gets the full extent of the punishment that he can have by law. And it's like, I hate the fact that, you know, yes, wolves, wolves just do what they do. It's not the wolves fault that right. people are reintroducing right. them to areas. They're just going to do what they do. They're incredible animals. I don't, I don't have any ill will towards wolves. I think they're incredible. I got a, I'm a wolf hide right there. I love wolves. Um, but so hunting them and managing them when there's a, a manageable population, all that, that's how it works. That's what I want. Just randomly killing. And even when guys say that SSS shoot, shovel and shut up, you know, they're saying like, just kill wolves on site because we don't want them here. I don't even agree with that. I think it should be done a, a science-based management program based on, you know, what we're trying to do, the objectives we have for the elk herds, the deer herds, the wolves, if they're in this area, and they should all be hunted. That's how you manage your population. That's how you make it all balanced. Because as we know, mother nature can't do that on, on its own. But for one guy to run one over, tape its mouth <laughs> shut and fuck around with it in a bar, then kill it. It's like, that's disgusting. Yeah, that's it, terrible. It's I mean, what fucking, you, what's the point? What are you doing? It's, to to have some story with your boys at the bar, yeah. I mean, and now it's like this is a black eye on all outdoorsmen. Yeah, because you know they're going to take that and push the narrative. Uh, any anything they can get a hold of, they yeah. will, especially with hunting. I mean, yeah. And, and what's been disappointing is this happened this winter. The sheriff in the county actually didn't know about it until he read about it in an article. Really? Yeah. Mm. And this guy got a two hundred and fifty dollar fine. That's it. That's it. Didn't have his license taken away. Didn't. Oh, have... he's already been prosecuted for this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Whew, man, which is just disappointing. I feel like that's even more. It's like, well, look at this guy. He didn't even get reprimanded for this behavior. So clearly, all hunters, you know, don't think it's that bad. Yeah, they get a slap on the exactly. wrist. Exactly. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I would have wanted something much worse than that for this guy. I mean, I think it's terrible, and I think it's, it's we work so hard to um any press we get or any you know like on if i'm posting on my social media i'm always trying to be respectful and to give people who follow me or maybe come to my page who are hunters to where they understand why people hunt and and the right way to do it and now when they see stuff like this because this will go all over the anti-wolf hunting or or pro-wolf organizations they're gonna they're gonna you know push this yeah, yeah this is going to be out there a lot and probably not even just for the the wolf hunting i mean they're going to use it for yeah all hunting bloodthirsty yeah. yeah. i mean that's yeah yeah lawless i mean it's yeah it's definitely a black guy for all outdoorsmen i uh uh yeah it's so disappointing it's appalling i just god it just made me sick to my stomach to see it yeah i i agree no. it's just disgusting to see yeah well on a different tune um some more news in the running world, but it's a little more. There's one thing that's outside, but a little bit in uh, your sphere as well. Hmm. A couple weekends ago, you ran an 8K, kind of a heat check. Yeah. How was that? Uh, that was hard. Yeah. <laughs> an 8K is pretty much, so that's five miles for those that don't aren't, aren't into the Ks and the <laughs> yeah. meters and the centimeters and the whatever, kilometers. So yeah, <laughs> eight kilometers is five miles. And uh, basically, I never know how, if I'm in shape, I run all the time, but you know, I see people like old guys running, they're running like 20 minute miles, but <laughs> yeah. it, they think they're running. I'm like, is that me? Cause <laughs> I'm an old like, guy, so I maybe, maybe I'm that. <laughs> so it's like, I never really know. Cause I don't wear a watch. I don't really do any splits or anything like that on my runs. They just kind of go out and whatever, just kind of punch a time clock. So I looked for this race and I thought, Oh, here's this local race at Junction City here. And uh, I'll go out there. Hopefully no one fast is out there. It <laughs> makes me feel feel slow and old. And uh, we'll see. So I think there's a hundred and some people out there. It's pretty fun. Uh, last Saturday. And I uh, saw these guys that were warming up. They looked pretty fast, pretty young. And I'm like, oh, I saw these girls running. I'm like, God, they look like track girls too. So this is going to suck. But yeah, we took off, took off out of there and we were, I thought I was running pretty good, but there's this guy way the fuck up there. So I asked this kid who I was kind of catching up to, we got to the one mile marker and I said, Hey, I said, what's our time at the mile? And he's like, you know, he's, ah, ah, 
He's like, Mom, 559. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. I said, how fast is that fucker running up there? <laughs> yeah. And I get, I found out afterwards, the guy in front of us ran his first mile in 455. Ooh. So just under a five minute mile Burning. taken off. And I'm like, you know, hopefully he blows up, but he didn't. He, in, he averaged 524s, I think, for the race and he won. And then uh, I passed this guy. He was in third. He's running pretty good. We went two and a half miles out and turned around, turned two and a half miles back, reverse course there. And we turned around and I was pretty close to him. Then I passed him after we started heading back. And I'm like, okay, I just got to try to keep the wheels on for a little over two miles. You know, so sort of like you're doing the math. I'm like, if I'm running six minute miles, that's 12 <laughs> minutes, 13 minutes. Cause I got another half mile. It's like, can I hold it together for 13 minutes? Which 13 minutes doesn't seem like that long, except for when you're sprinting. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, it's like a plank. It's like the plank's the long, longest minute of your life. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah. Can you just shake it? Oh, oh, yeah. I can plank for a minute. Then you start <laughs> doing it and you're like, oh, how long? Wait, 30 Jesus, seconds? Jesus Christ. Yeah, I know. You're like, what? My, my watch is screwed up. But uh, yeah, so in, in watching TV, 13 minutes is nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Goes by quick. It's, it's context. <laughs> it's a, God, you're pounding that freaking. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's sitting I'm starting that. to sweat. That was, <laughs> that was uh, uh, yeah, you know, energy drink. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I held it. The wheel started to come off at the very end, but held it on. Held on for second place, and um, right at 30 minutes and one second, I think. So just a little over six minute miles. But yeah, that was a heat check. All, nice. So, what was the heat check for? I don't know this past weekend you're you had a big 50k yeah i mean those are two totally different races i think the heat check was mostly for the g marathon okay which is at the end of this month yep and uh because if i could run sixes for five i should be able to run 640s for quite a while mm -hmm. right yep. 40 seconds slower is a lot <laughs> and to run under three hours at the Eugene Marathon, I need to run like 644s or 50s or something like that. So I thought, well, let me see how, if I'm fit at the 8K, and then that'll give me a good gauge for um, Eugene. And then in between those two races was this last past weekend. So a week after the 8K was, I do this, it's called Shotgun Creek 50K, or no, Trail Blast, Shotgun Trail Blast 50K. And I've done that probably... I don't know, maybe seven times. And it's just a small, a local 50K, but there's always good runners that show up, like one or two that are just gonna fuck up your day. <laughs> Usually it's my brother, yeah. he's <laughs> one of them. Or, uh, or this other kid, not this kid, he's a guy, uh, Nate Jacqua. He played professional soccer for quite a while, I think 10 years. And then now he does, I think he won Crazy Mountain Ultra, which is that one in, in Montana, which is mm. tough. Yeah. Um, those mountains are rugged and he's won the hurt 100 in Hawaii. I think a couple times, which is another really hard 100. So he's won. he beat Taylor once. And I think I can't remember where I was in that, that year, but, and if he doesn't show up and him and Taylor aren't battling then Taylor's won it like four times, my brother. So you never know who's going to be out there. Anyway, I planned, you know, I'm always like, just seeing how I feel. I never feel great, but if I, don't feel like a complete piece of shit i'll show up <laughs> so that's that was a saturday and i showed up and taylor um he's got a big race coming up this weekend the peterson ridge i think it's a 40 miler and nate jock was running that so they they both didn't want to blow out their legs the weekend before when you do those you know a 50k is for people that don't know 31 miles and it's in mud i mean it's it's a lot of work your legs will not bounce back in a week. I mean, you might feel okay, but you can't push again that fast usually. Um, so they, neither one of them showed up to shotgun because they're saving themselves for this Saturday coming up, which I'm excited to see how that race plays out. Cause there's always some good runners. It's over there in central Oregon. And, uh, it's, uh, what's the distance of it's that? It's fat 40 miles. Okay. Yeah. It's so a little bit further than 50 K, but, uh, they're going to fly because it's not going to be muddy. You know, it's yeah. it's central. It's a little drier there in central Oregon, so it should be good. But uh, we went, showed up Saturday, 
um, we're sitting in the parking lot. You guys were there and we're kind of scanning, seeing the cars pulling in, <laughs> seeing get, people getting out of the cars. You know, I'm always like, who's this fucker? And I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, like you look at the the stickers on their car and then you see the oh waldo 100k all these other things and i'm like god damn it this guy looks like he can run <laughs> yeah. so yeah you never know who's going to show up especially in this area this is this is track town usa right and uh so had a pretty good beat on who was all there um there was this kid who got last year taylor won i got second then this um his his wife grew up right down the street from us and his name's rodney he's a really good runner he's done he did uh i think a couple hundred milers and one of them just last year he did in 24 hours and seven minutes which is a good hundred and uh so he's tough and he trains a lot and he wrestled i think he wrestled at oregon state so <clears throat> that mentality is kind of what you need so i knew that he would you know make whoever's going to win is going to have to be an honest effort to, to hold him off, you know, yeah. plus the other people I didn't know, but, um, yeah. So it was just a good day to run muddy. Um, didn't really rain, just perfect weather pretty much for hitting a hard. So yeah. it was good. Yeah. I don't think you, uh, have said where you finished yet. Um, yeah, we're just trying to run hard the whole time, get a good, good, <laughs> good, solid effort. He won. Yeah. He won. won't say it, but I will. Yeah, won. it was. Uh, yeah, it was good. I think so. We do six laps of five little, like five point two miles per lap, and it's you take off out of there, and it's kind of a long uphill, gradual climb for about six hundred feet, I think, which doesn't seem like a lot except when you're trying to run fast. Yeah. <laughs> then that elevation you feel. And then you get up and then you do so a couple miles to do that then about a little over three down and around along the creek and and it gets muddier as it goes because as you guys noticed there's four races that day mm -hmm. the 50k starts at nine i think the 25k starts at or i mean at eight the 25k starts at 8 30. yeah i think it was 30 minutes after yep and then let's see there was a 15k and a 10k is out or uh, 10k a, and a 5k 10k and yeah. a 5k so four races and they had a hundred and some, I don't know what the total was, but on a muddy single track doing loop laps of a hundred, it's going to get by the end, it's a soupy mess. And I don't know anybody who's tried to run and you're trying to run fast when you're wasting energy because your feet are sliding mm -hmm. around, but you're trying to stay upright. It takes, a, it takes some out of you. It's not like running on a road. Did you take any falls? Cause you yeah. You, you came through with some battle scars. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I went down probably at least three times. <laughs> I think a lot of people did. I mean, yeah, every lap there'd through. be a new person that comes through with a big mud streak on their <laughs> side. side. Yeah, it, a little it, hobble in their step. Like, <laughs> I and I even had good shoes for it. I saw people run like having road shoes on. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know how they stayed upright at all. Well, I, there was one guy with with road shoes on, and when you know everyone was lining up to start, <clears throat> I heard him lean over to someone and say, "Is this all on the road?" <laughs> <laughs> no, it's going to be a bad day. <laughs> the, o the only road there was was like where you could see us coming out of the trees yeah, over there, yeah. and right past my truck, pretty Come. much. So that whatever that was, 150 yards. That was the only road for 5.2 miles. Yeah. <laughs> the rest of it was mud. So, yeah, I don't know how those guys didn't. I mean, and it's steep. You come down off that top, it's like some of them, you could see where everybody's grabbing a tree to stop themselves yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> because they had to grab something. Otherwise, they're sliding right off the trail. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was good. I, I went out. I My goal, because I'm old, not that fast, but... I thought, well, if the, you know, Rodney, he's 27 or something like that. <clears throat> if it comes down to the end and he's pretty fresh and I'm pretty fresh, I'm going to lose. <laughs> so I needed to go out fast, hopefully faster than he should have. Mm -hmm. And hopefully he pays for it later. And hopefully I, there's always a chance that I wouldn't pay for it too. So I went out pretty fast, which 40 minutes for that is fast Yeah, to do that lap loop. Yeah. I mean, I, I think on our way up there, you said, oh, you know, the laps average, you know, around 45. And yeah. we had set a timer for 40 minutes. Yeah. 
got out of the truck at 40 and then the announcer's like, here comes the first 50 care. And we were yeah, like, you shit. came through way faster <laughs> yeah. than we were expecting. Yeah. yeah. So I went out hard and uh, was trying to see, you know, who could keep up. You know, I didn't know the other people who were running, but um, if anybody could keep up, I'd be like, okay, let's make it pretty quick pace. And so 40's fast for that. And uh, then I don't think I stopped or t- got any water. I think I had, my water was still good maybe. And so uh, I had one little bottle, eight ounce bottle I was packing with me. And um, so didn't stop, kind of kept going to the second lap in 40 minutes also. Yeah. And I think, I don't know what my gap was at that time. Do you remember what? It started, it was like five minute increments for a while. Yeah, after I the, he came through. After the first lap, I think it was like, like five, five minutes. Five minutes. Right? I think. Yeah. yeah. And five then after that second, I think it was 10. It was 10. Yeah. And, and then, then was from like there, four. yeah. That, yeah. That it increased. So that strategy yeah. kind of paid off. Yeah. It did. It did. I mean, I slowed down too, but I think I went 40, 40, 43, 46. And then how many is that? That's four. And then 40, 40, 43, 46. I think you had a 47 right after the 46. Oh, and, and then, then 50. 50. And then 50. Yep. Yeah. So I, I slowed down, but still, if you can stay under 50 is good yeah. later in the race. Um, and then uh, I was just at the end, after all that, you don't want to push that hard and then get beat. So I was still trying to push, <laughs> but my legs were a little bit fatigued. And so I, all I had in me for that last lap was a 50, but it was still enough to to get the win. I cannot say enough good things about the guys over at Montana Knife Company. I've been using their knives in the mountains for the past three years, and I've been nothing but impressed. They're an American company, their knives are made here in America, and their master bladesmith, Josh Smith, is one of the best knife makers out there. Their culinary cutlery is some of the best I've used, even though I don't use it because I don't cook, but I do use it when I'm eating. But I do know any cook would likely love them in their kitchen. I'm proud to partner with the guys over at Montana Knife and looking forward to some cool new products we're working on collaborating on in the coming months. Head over to montananifecompany.com today and use code CAM for free shipping. I'd like to welcome Grizzly Coolers to the sponsorship of not only the podcast, but my hunt lifestyle. I couldn't be more thrilled that they are an American-made company that supplies durable, hard-sided coolers and hunting blinds. As you guys know, the meat from every one of my hunts means the world to me, my family, and friends. Meat storage and temperature control is of the utmost importance in transferring game from the hunt to your freezer, and there's nothing better than Grizzly products. The coolers are roto-molded, built for performance, field-tested, and guaranteed for a lifetime. Grizzly also has a wide variety of gear for all your outdoor adventure and training needs. Followers of the podcast get an exclusive 20% off of everything using code KEEPHAMMERING at grizzlycoolers.com upon checkout. Again, that's use code KEEPHAMMERING at checkout. So, yeah, we were taking over-unders in the parking lot of what the <laughs> yeah, last lap was going to be. What did you guys guess? A Tanner had, we had a wild gonna, guess. Yeah, we thought you were 39. Gonna, 39. He thought your fastest no, lap was going to be last. I said 41. But then he changed it to 4120. <laughs> I said 4120. I think I had you at 4210. <laughs> We thought we thought you were gonna kick it into like a like a. We thought you were gonna get up 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 to that uphill spot where it comes down, and you were just gonna start yeah. putting the pace yeah. down. We thought you were gonna walk in. Yeah, yeah. But. It's I uh, that would have been nice. <laughs> My <laughs> legs were, you know, by that time we were you know twenty six miles in, so you got a marathon on your legs already. Yeah. It's tough to. It would be nice. Yeah. It would be nice to fly in that fast, but you know. My uh, my strategy on those is I can run like a lot of tra- ultra runners aren't super fast on the roads, so I'm pretty fast for like an ultra runner, for an average ultra runner, not for elites. I'm not talking elites. I'm talking average. But to be able to run like on that flat along the creek coming back, I could run like. 630s. Yeah, you're so, pretty good. So I could I could run. I figured quicker than most of the other ones on the flats. Maybe they'd get me on the going up or the down. So I was trying to really push the flat part. Yeah. And, uh, I, my, my theory was you were gaining most of your time in the uphill just because oh. I feel like, yeah, you, you're pretty relentless on the uphills, at least when I have to follow time. you with a camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. But a lot of guys who do those are really good. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I don't, I don't feel like I'm good at anything. Uh, Compared to average people, I'm decent on the flats. That's my only strength. 
Yeah, um, I mean, from where we were standing, it was like a minute and 10 seconds once we could see you pop up. So it was like 42 minutes came around and we're like, oh, then 44. And it was like, oh, oh for the last yeah, lap, and, then I, the bets. and then I remember you saying, <laughs> if you can keep it below 50, that's really good towards the end of the race. And so like, it was like 48, 30. And I was like, come on, pop out, yeah. pop out. Cause I wanted you to come in below 50 on the last lap. But, yeah. Uh, it was a solid effort. Yeah. Tanner and I were talking and it was like, you know, I think a lot of people, obviously keyboard warriors love to just say whatever comes to their mind because there's no consequences for whatever they say. But yeah. we were just like, you know, so many people in the comment sections under your posts have no idea that pretty, pretty legit and badass runner. So it was cool to go out there and see you see get the win. Yeah. 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 It was, it was fun. I mean, what I liked about it was all the other people out there doing the other races. It was cool. I mean, there's yeah. a little kid out there. Yeah, that, that 11 year old with the 25 k. I know. And I mean, he came in moving pretty good Quick, too. A yeah. lot of people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was. I, I saw. You know, I came by them a couple times. I told him one time. I said, "I go, how lucky are we?" He goes, "He goes, are you on your third lap already?" And I said, "Yeah." And I, he goes, he goes, "Oh man." I said, yeah, I'm lucky. I get to do double what you guys get, get to do. I said, I'm I'm twice as lucky as you. I said, but you're lucky you get to do three laps out here. Just like, and he was just having a good time yeah. with his dad. And uh, so I thought I was really impressed. He just was, I don't know how he finished, but he's positive every time I saw him and working hard. I mean, he was really positive when he came in too. It seemed yeah. like he had had a blast. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's cool. I mean, see. shame on you know, that dad for putting his kid through such a hard thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. Probably reminded Tanner of when his childhood and his shitty dad yeah. put at him one point I, back all the bad. Uh, yeah. I was going to say at one point I did look at Tanner and he was crying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he had flashbacks. <laughs> yeah. 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 Tanner did some tough. T I, I see one. I remember there was a picture of him. He did the gorge half marathon. I think he was seven. <laughs> and ran like a 202 for half marathon, which is freaking for a good. Seven year old? Seven year old. And that yeah. was, it had a big climb. You went ha so six and a half miles or something up and then turn around and come down. That's a good effort to run 202. Yeah. yeah. So that was, he was pretty young. I remember I, there's a picture of him and Trace on that road. And <clears throat> um, yeah, so I, we're just giving the, the dad a hard time. I, yeah. I, I know the, the family and great people, but. I think it's important to, um, I think it's only positive to show kids what working hard for something. So that kid ran 15 miles yeah. in the mud. That's, that's incredible. It's yeah. awesome. But the, the positives he can take from that and that experience and to think back when shit gets hard, you know, at school yeah. or whatever, and just be like, well, I did do 15 miles in the mud <laughs> going uphill, up and down hills. You know that's that helps anybody, yeah. let alone a kid. Definitely. So yeah. I thought that was neat. Uh, There's a guy who I went to uh, high school with. He was out there. He did the 50k. Uh, Carl Llewellyn, love him. He's a just super supportive, tough guy. I've always seen him at Pisca. Um, the race organi organizers there, they've been around forever. Love those guys. They put on great events, yeah. good food, good soup at the end. Um, a guy who I worked with over here at the, it used to be Coast to Coast Warehouse. It's, it's now a true value, but Kelly Padawan, he always helps those races. And he was there. I've known him for over 30 years. We used to go play basketball down at, uh, down on campus. Um, he was loved the Lakers and he would, <laughs> he would had the, the best magic Johnson moves. He was just a baller. <laughs> and so we'd go down there and try not to get in fights and the college kids would just be crazy. We, we played under Matt court, which is where now it's Matthew Knight arena. They used to play at Matt court, which is still there, but underneath they have gyms. So on Friday night, Friday and Saturday nights, you could go and open gym some good games down there. But me and Kelly used to go do that then go to the bar afterwards and <laughs> be idiots. But uh, yeah, so it's uh, just saw a lot of cool people. I love love the ultra community for sure. No, oh, that was that was sweet. Um, well, last thing in the in the kind of running world, I know I brought this up last time, but he's finally finished. Yeah. And that's just the hardest geezer finally did it. I know. Yeah. yeah. Incredible. Did you know that was 9,000 something yeah. miles? 
ridiculous. Yeah, nine thousand. I, I think I saw a stat that he ran. Uh, it's like three hundred and eighty-five marathons or something like that. Oh, Which yeah, is insane. You know, because and rightfully so, it's a big deal running across the United States. Yeah, it's only three thousand miles. Yeah, that's like a fucking sprint. Yeah, compared to that. Well, and then he like got kidnapped during the during yeah, the process. Get, that right? he got kidnapped, held at gunpoint, uh, held at gun, like robbed at gunpoint. <laughs> yeah, like, and he still finished it. Like talk about. I it. didn't know he got cool kidnapped. Shit. Yeah, Russ Cook, otherwise known as the hardest geezer, has been forced to pause his world record run after he was robbed at gunpoint in Angola. Things took a turn for worse, and and you were held up at gunpoint. Tell us about that. I didn't know that either. Yeah, it's a uh, pretty iconic. I, I mean. I don't know. That's going to stand for a while. We were thinking, Tanner was saying, what's the longest you could do? And I was like, well, you could run. Theoretically, you could run from the top of Canada to the bottom of South America. That's right. Yeah. Couldn't you? Hypothetically. If you, yeah. Well, you'd have to get on a ferry through the Panama Canal. Oh. Yeah. Because it's the same with the Pan-American Highway. They have you can drive the whole way. Okay. And that section right through there apparently is extremely dangerous. Where? Even when driving it. The the section where you're, you know, going across the, the Panama Canal. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, it's not quite, there's not a road there. So it'd be interesting to see, you hmm. know, if someone could run that. But that would be, how many miles would that be? I don't even know. Yeah. That'd have to be over 9,000 though. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess technically you could go. Because the U.S. from Canada to, to Mexico is like 2,000. Yeah, right. So... so I don't know. That's a good distance. Yeah, I'm not sure what it'd be. But yeah, we were talking about what's the longest run you could do. Yeah. And I, was, I threw that up, but I forgot about the Panama Canal. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know if anyone's going to want to be like, all right, I'm going to go get the FKT of the length of Africa. Oh, my yeah. God. I'm, I'm shooting for 340 days. <laughs> <laughs> what a beast. Yeah. That yeah. is just super it's, impressive. It's, yeah, it is cool just to see like people doing cool shit and i know last time we talked about it you know we were wondering why he hadn't gotten as much press and it kind of seems like he's getting now the recognition yeah. yeah now you know i i used his mindset during that race because i you know i was i was kind of i was by myself pretty much the whole time yeah, you know yeah. um so you do the go through these mental little hurdles or challenges <clears throat> and uh, i remember they asked him I saw a clip and they said, uh, he said he was sick. You know, he probably got sick a couple of times wow. during that, during a year. Yeah. You know, he's basically yeah. running for a year. Yeah. And um, he said he was sick, so he's going to take it easy that day. And they said, well, what's, what's taking it easy? And he's just like 50K. So I'm like, okay, if he could run every day for however many miles, 60 miles, and then taking it easy was what I was doing on Saturday. <laughs> I should be able to do yeah. at least that on a, on one day, yeah. right? So I'm like, if this fucker, when he's sick, is just going to, you know, easy day 50K, I better be able to push on this race. <laughs> easy, so I, I Easy used, day 50K of you. I used him cool on a t-shirt. Which, what's that? I said easy day 50K. Yeah. It's got a ring to it. Well, getting I also... A little, getting a little too comfortable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I also know uh, there was... Oh, she's a race organizer that I know. She's a friend. Her name's Candace Burt. She set the record. She ran a 50K every day for how many days was that? Do you, 200. Over 200 days. So yeah. ultra marathon, 200, over 200 days in a row. That's ridiculous. Yeah. I, I wonder if he must have had some breaks in there because otherwise he would have broken that, I'm guessing, if his, if his rest days were 50Ks. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Unless he... Maybe he broke it. Yeah, very well could have. Because yeah. sometimes when those guys do, like I know uh, Camille Heron, she ran something, I don't know how many miles, but for six days and she broke like 12 records, hmm. like women's record for a day for, you know, two days, three oh, days, yeah. something like that. It's like broke them all because right. she just was hardly ever stopping. Yeah, And I think she had a pretty good pace going. It was pretty flat. So it's, it's uh, you can rack up the miles if your body will hold up. And now, I'm pretty sure I just saw that Candace is uh, d trying to go for the FKT on the Arizona Trail. She just started, I think, today or yesterday. Oh, man. 800 miles. So I'm pretty sure. What is Tanner? That? Can you check that one too, Candace Burt? What What's is that? You, do you know what the FKT is now? Um, I know. Yeah, because Mike McKnight. I think he's going to be trying to get it. And he was trying to do it last year. I was going to p help pace him, but I think it's 15 days. Mm -hmm. So 
for 800 miles. That's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. And, uh, Last year, he was going from the south, I think, and Ben Light was going from the north, and they were going to pass each other and see who could get done first. And mm-hmm. Ben, I think, made it maybe 200 miles. Mike made it 600 miles. Neither one of them completed it, so oh. it's still out there. And uh, now I'm pretty sure Candace just started yesterday. Did you find that? Get my mic on. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, 22 hours ago, 800 miles. And that she's she's doing it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, she does it say what the FKT is? No, I couldn't find anything. Well, I could probably look that up, but yeah, that was just on her Instagram. Right. Yeah, so I, I knew she did and she's she's freaking tough. She's won, like I said, 200 days at 50k. So, it's called the Arizona Trail? Yeah, Arizona Trail. And she just texted me um there's a new race coming up that I was talking to Courtney about too, but uh, it's going to be a year from now and it's the, uh, it's in Arizona and it's 300 miles. So it's called the monster 300. So I think might sign up for that one. Ooh, that's cool. that's going to be the big goal for next year. So the we'll female to... FKT is 17 days, 11 hours, three minutes. Okay. I, I bet she'll get it. She's that was, fucking... that was in 2019. Yeah. She's a beast. Yeah. She's a beast. When you're in like Saturday's race, the 50K, is there a point where you hit, you know, maybe it's on that last lap, you're three miles out, two miles out, but is there ever a time where you hit mentally, you're like, okay, you know, I've got this in the bag, I'm going to finish it, and I, and, I, and I ran strong, or the whole time you're thinking, you know, just stay dialed in because something might go wrong, or do you ever, I mean... Um, I was always telling myself when I came through, because you guys were kind of keeping track of, yep. you know where second place was. So, um, I thought I felt pretty good about it, but I was thinking to myself, you know, like I said, the true good runners didn't show up. So I'm like, I'm never going to have a better chance to win. (laughs) I've been leading this race. I basically, I led from wire to wire. Yeah. And so I'm, I was thinking I, if I lose after leading this whole thing and just fucking let up or get weak, I was afraid of that. So I was trying to push as good as I could the whole time, stay yeah. focused, um, stay, st- just work hard yeah. instead of, cause you can, if you let up, uh, a 15 minute lead can go like that. Right. I mean, if you're walking, like a lot of people, yeah. they get so their legs get so tired mm-hmm. that they'll walk the Hills. Well, if you're walking and somebody else is running, that's time fucking, yeah. That that time is gone in a hurry. That so, gap's gonna get big. Yeah, it, it is. So I was like, I go, no, I gotta, I can't, I gotta finish strong. So I was just trying, you know, I was hope been nice to to be a little quicker in the last lap, but it was about what I had. Yeah. Um, but no, I was, I never really felt confident until even like coming around. I was just still <laughs> checking back. Like God, I hope I didn't yeah. fuck something up and you know get blown. Could you imagine? I remember Taylor one time. He said he was there along the creek. You know, it's kind of where we took those pictures the other day. Yeah. Do you remember where, yeah. where I jumped out? So that's where that trail comes right oh, along. Oh, okay. That. It's on the the road is on the one side. The trail yep. we ran is on the other okay. side. And um, he Taylor was right there. His shoe came untied. He bent down to tie his shoe, and that Nate Jockwell passed him oh, and beat oh, him by like a. Man under a minute. <laughs> so, so I was like, I'm not letting that happen. So I was still, I was like running, trying to check just like, even though you guys said, Oh yeah, you're, I can't remember what the last gap I had was, but I was always worried. Yeah. The last one was like, I guess that's a, another pro to the speed land shoes. The no laces, no, no laces have to bend down and tie. <laughs> no one's ever going to pass you when you tie your shoe. Yeah. 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 No, it was fun. It was, it was good. I mean, yeah, it was good to be able to, to get the win and see all the run with all those cool people. And, yeah. And Speedlands finished 1 2 in that race. They did. That's yeah. a great point. I, it's a fast shoe. It's a quick shoe. I saw uh, there's a, a few pair of them out there. There's a couple. Yeah. Yeah, I saw another guy with them. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Cool. Well, yeah, because there was the the guy running right behind you. Rodney. Rodney. And then yeah. I think someone who ran a 25K yeah. was wearing them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, they're perfect for that. I mean, Rodney went down a lot last year when he got third 
And uh, he said, he sent me a message afterwards and he said he only fell one time. He said, the shoe, yeah, you're yeah. right, the shoes worked. They, yeah. They're definitely good in mud. And they're not that the lugs are far enough apart where they don't hold the mud. Nice. They shed it. So it's like you still got that traction all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So they're like perfect for that those conditions. Well, I think that's it for past events. I mean, do we have anything coming up that we should be letting people know about? I'm trying to think. I mean, Tanner had mentioned last time, Cheeto's obviously going to be on, but we've got it's another week before he, he comes on. A little okay. more than a week, actually, too. UFC 300. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I that's leave on deal. Friday. Pretty excited about that. Yeah, that'll be a good one. Um, then we got Cheeto. Then we got uh, Lift Run Shoot in Austin. Yep. And a 10K in Austin on Sunday. I saw Truett put something up that, can anybody beat me and my dad? <laughs> so it's like, don't do that. Because <laughs> there's so many fast fucking people out there. Yeah. But he did put that up. Um, yeah, so, and then the Eugene Marathon, I guess. Oh, Eugene Marathon's before Austin. But uh, yeah, there'll be a lot of good runners here for the marathon. Hopefully, we'll probably film some of that, yeah. whatever you guys can get. Yeah, I mean, that's, I guess, the other part of your run is I was out there filming, too, so we'll have something from from that to put out. Yeah. Don't know how long it'll be, but we got some pretty good footage. So. Yeah, sweet. Yeah. So that'll be good. Yeah. Well, thanks for the the co-hosting or guest yeah. guest hosting. Uh, what what do we call this? Bring our, uh, we can uh, wrap up with the uh, hardest geezer did say I was snatched by machete-wielding a machete wielding tribe. He, <laughs> he did? <laughs> yeah. Holy yeah. shit. A hundred days into his challenge. So I wonder oh. where he, what, what country does it say? Whatever country has cannibals. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. He says he, so, he, all feared, of them. he feared he may have encountered cannibals. God. So how do you get out of that situation? I mean, yeah. run. <laughs> yeah. 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 But he says he was snatched. I don't know. So look, well, last time we spoke to you, Russ, was the end of June and you'd been robbed at yeah. gunpoint mm. and you talked us through that, which was scary enough. Like, I'll, I'll be honest, it was the scariest, scariest couple of days there of my life. I've gone to, to, to make a beeline for one of the villages that I thought that we'd, that they'd be able to get to and uh, basically they couldn't get there and I've, I'm hacking away through like single track jungle paths that are all overgrown and Africa is a wild place. I nothing would surprise me there. Yeah. Nothing would surprise me. I mean, a hundred days. So he's over there. He went over on the west coast. I, shit. But this Can't, article doesn't really expand on that. So no. uh, I don't know. This is the sun dot com. Yeah. Well, I'm sure I he'll mean, write a book about the, it. The U.S. Sun. Talk we want it. we want to get him on the pod. I was gonna say. I hope he comes on go. the podcast. Yeah, I mean, I I saw that when him running like in the sandstorm oh, with I goggles on, yeah. oh, so Too badass, ferocious. <laughs> so badass. Yeah. I mean, what a fucking beast! If all these people who I've been in contact with ca- actually came to the podcast, because it's been Sean Strickland, Channing Tatum, hardest geezer I haven't been in contact with them, but talked about him. Um, who else is on our wish list? Uh, Caitlin Clark. <laughs> that would be sweet. Caitlin. That would be sweet. People talked about she can't be the GOAT because no championship. Mm-hmm. But I did see a, a graphic about Pete Maravich. You guys know who that is? Yeah, he, yeah Pistol Pete. He never won a championship. And he averaged like 44 a game. Yeah. Just, you know, icon. Yeah, I mean. Larry Bird well, never won a championship in college. He's in no GOAT conversation. I, that's what I was going to say is, I mean, it, does he come up in the GOAT conversation, though? Definitely not like, you know, the main three do. You know, I feel like there's really three prominent ones. I mean, I guess there's like four or five, but yeah. I mean, hopefully she's recognized for what she brought to the sport. And it's Larry unfortunate. Bird didn't. Um, I guess Jordan did win one, didn't he? Jordan? At court. Yeah, he won. Six. No, one in college. Oh, in yeah. college? Yeah, yeah, he hit the game winner. Yeah. yeah. As a freshman, he hit that, yeah, that baseline jumper kind of. Yeah. LeBron and Kobe have no. Right, they no yeah. they never even played. They didn't even play. <laughs> yeah, so, but you, yeah, so I guess they they don't really reference college as a goat. No, Mm-mm. it's always pro, isn't yeah. it? It'll be. I mean, well, I think to be the goat, you have to perform at the highest level. Yeah, right. So it's got to be based off of your professional pro. career. I, yeah, I think. Yeah. I hope that people 
pay attention and it's not right now. I don't know. What, I don't even look at fucking WNBA. Scores. Name a team. <laughs> Name one WNBA team. Um, Mer- yeah, Mercury. <laughs> all right. Or uh, or or Liberty. That Liberty tells me. That tells me all I need to know about you guys. <laughs> Aces. I think Las Vegas Aces is a team. Oh, he's the WNBA's largest fan yeah. right here. <laughs> I don't know if I can name five guys in the NCAA tournament this year. That's very true. Yeah, I I don't think I could. But the girls just dominated. Yeah. So it was that was pretty sick. Well, yeah. wasn't the Iowa LSU game like across it, it all was, sports? Like it was more watched viewed? than some NBA finals. Yeah. Not last year's, but I think maybe the year before. No, I like that, was no. it last year's? Yeah, and then also I, I saw the numbers for South Carolina the last game. Yeah, and it was like eighteen million. So most watched ever. Yeah. yeah, which is crazy. That's really cool. Yeah. More than every MLB game last year, like every college football game minus one, I think. Yeah. Like that's that's impressive. I know. And I think, yeah, looking at what Caitlin Clark and all those people did for the sport. <laughs> I mean, it was cool, like kind of being invested into yeah. something different. Yeah. For you sure. know, I'm a lot of, we're joking around, but it, it's but, hard to ignore greatness. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And no, so absolutely. it was, it was so fun to watch. And it's like, we're joking around, but we, we, a lot of respect. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's all out of just admiration. Yeah. <laughs> That's a weekend update or weekly update or whatever we're calling these things. And uh, with Gideon and Lawrence. That's right. Yeah, thanks for watching. The T minus 72 crew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time. Keep hammering. All right, guys. Welcome to the brand new CameronHayes.com truck giveaway. This truck used to be red, but we got this sick badass wrap on it to go with the theme of this giveaway. What you do in the dark matters. That means we gotta train at night. We gotta get better, we gotta earn that edge at night. So what you do in the dark matters out there getting in those miles, maybe shooting in the driveway in the headlights of a, of a, of a truck, or maybe just pushing weights in the gym. We gotta do something to set ourselves apart. So that's where, hey, the night shift comes in. And this brand new 2023 Ram TRX, 702 horsepower, killer looking ride, is gonna to go to somebody who enters to win at CameronHaynes.com. Whoever that is, I'm gonna fly them out here. They're gonna get this ride. I'll hand them the keys and 10,000 in cash. And I hope it's you. So again, head to my website, figure out how to enter and win. Good luck, keep hammering.